Spirit of God, fill us with your power so that we may be made one with you and Jesus the Christ. May your Spirit lead us in ways that overcome the evil in this world and allow us to do your will and your work. As we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth might be pleasing and acceptable to you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, as much as I love this particular scripture, scripture passage, because it truly confirms the, the, the correctness of our open and affirming procedure, and our open and affirming statement. Because, again, this scripture tells us that the gospel is for, and the salvation is for all people. The Holy Spirit is for all people. But Pentecost causes me somewhat of a conundrum. Because the story tends to lead us to believe that the Holy Spirit is conveyed to the disciples on this particular day. That somehow, before this event, no human being had God's Holy Spirit. We see this even today, where some religions believe that you receive the Holy Spirit. The conveyance of the Holy Spirit happens at baptism, or when you personally accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And unfortunately, when, when, when only those two things are what allows you to receive the Holy Spirit, then that sets up an automatic us versus them mentality that says that unless you are baptized or accept Jesus in a special way, then you can't have the Holy Spirit. You can't have the indwelling Spirit of God. Now, I personally don't think that God keeps God's spirit reserved for only certain members of humanity because God sent Jesus to save all the world. And that is good news for us. There's nothing we do or can do to deserve God's salvation. It is a gift. And God gave us Jesus for salvation to all the world. Remember, Jesus came to, sa to save the world, not condemn the world. And as we're told in the scriptures, without the Holy Spirit, we don't even have enough faith to be able to believe and understand salvation. And on top of that, when we are born, the scriptures tell us that God breathes the breath of life into us. The breath of life, the pneuma, the pneuma, which is the wind, which is the breath, and pneuma means spirit. God breathes the spirit of life into you, the breath of life, both physically and spiritually. We receive that Holy Spirit when God breathes life into that little infant. What a wonderful thought that is, that God gives us this Spirit as a gift at birth. What we do with it is a whole other story. But we also know that from the Old Testament stories, that some prophets were filled with, with God's Spirit to do amazing things. And we even heard in the Pentecost story that people were filled with God's Spirit. Now some of these stories imply that the filling of the Spirit was, a, was only temporary gift that could be granted at special times. So the Holy Spirit was only given, uh, was given only at special times in human history and only to certain people. Is that what we understand? Is that what we believe? Or is, is God's will to create all human beings and also to save them? This is the question that we have to ask ourselves. Because that question is what determines our salvation and our relationship with God. Do all human beings have the indwelling Holy Spirit? Now, if they don't, if they don't have it, then salvation depends on our human ability to believe, to accept Christ as our Savior, or to go and become baptized. What about all those who don't get baptized with the actual baptism 
what happens to them? What happens if you don't have the faith to believe? Or you don't know who Jesus Christ is? Do you go to hell? Do you have no salvation? Would your creator create you? And then send you into torment? You see, our faith is supposedly the size of a mustard seed. And God says that the Holy Spirit will give us the necessary faith to believe. But if we don't have it, how can the Holy Spirit help us? It's a catch-22 situation. And that's why I truly believe that the Holy Spirit is given at birth. See, this belief that we have to receive the Holy Spirit is the building block to receive it only through a special way is, a, is the building block of the us versus them attitudes that we see in our world today and even in some of our religions. If God's Spirit isn't a part of who we are, then we can legitimately treat others as non-believers. And we can dismiss people. Because if you don't have God's Holy Spirit, well then, just go away. And is that what we are taught to believe? We're taught to treat other people that way? See, then there'd be no reason to be in relationship with anyone other than just a Christian. See, that's the problem. Because if everybody has God's Holy Spirit dwelling them, then we really can't mistreat others without feeling a little guilty about it, right? If God is a part of them, then we have to give them the benefit of the doubt and hope that God's Spirit fills them with understanding, with love and acceptance, especially when we don't agree on certain things. If everyone has God's Spirit, it makes it increasingly harder to mistreat them. And that is good news. That's great news for us. To be able to treat everyone, everyone as a child of God. Think about that for a minute. How can you mistreat a child of God? How can you be nasty or indignant or discriminatory or hurtful to God's child? It makes it a lot harder. And that's why I believe the Holy Spirit dwells us from birth. From birth. See, then, if that's the case, see, if, if we do have the Holy Spirit, then we'd have to pray for them, right? We, we'd have to try to understand them. We, we'd have to practice patience with them. And we'd have to allow the Spirit to work in them. Relationship, reconciliation, salvation, forgiveness, it all depends on the filling of the Spirit, not the conveyance of the Spirit, but rather the filling of the Spirit. And our scripture lesson makes it very clear that the Holy Spirit is, in fact, for all people. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Lib uh, Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. I mean, Peter tells us that both Jew and Gentile were in Jerusalem for the festival of the grain harvest. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit to speak foreign languages. He links the Old Testament with the New Testament by calling on the prophecy of Joel. That tells us the Holy Spirit's, tells us of the Holy Spirit's power. I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Peter's testimony and the use of the Old Testament prophecy clearly show that the Holy Spirit is meant for all people. All people. There's no longer any spiritual distinction between men and women, old and young, servants or free, as well as especially or spiritually gifted priesthood. And the common laity are all eligible to prophesy, speak God's word. 
The gift at Pentecost is a stunning message of true equality and reciprocity among all people in the spirit. Our scriptures don't call us for an, an un, us versus them conclusion. So we don't need to call for one either. Because those who call for division, exclusion, or separation are not following God's word or instruction at all. And it is unfortunate that our nation today is so divided, and it's been that way for a long time. Think about it. Back in the 60s, hippies were shot at Kent State. Those who wanted prayer out of schools back in the 70s. Race riots and wants. Catholic versus Protestant during the Kennedy election. And today, today, immigrants are called murderers, drug dealers, and rapists. LGBT community are being openly discriminated while only seeking to have simple human rights. And then we see transgender bans in the military, women's reproductive rights and uh, wages under scrutiny. I mean, it's truly sad how we treat God's children, all of God's children in this way. Because we're better than that. We have God's Holy Spirit inside of us. That same power that Christ said, we will do greater things than he did. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the power that we have? That power that is inside of us and stays with us every single day of our life, moment by moment. We are never alone. And that, of course, doesn't even touch some of our religious discriminations that we do against Muslims and, and Jews, especially if you about the Holocaust and other religions that aren't necessarily Christian. These divisions have been around for a long, long time. And the Holy Spirit is the one thing that can bring us all together. It's great news. That's wonderful news for the church, for our nation, and for our world. We can come together because of the power that God has gifted to us. So as we celebrate the birth of the church, we need to remember to celebrate the filling of the Holy Spirit as well. Because it truly is our only hope to bring the world and our nation together. It is possible for us to do God's will and God's work on this earth through the power and the filling of the Spirit in our hearts and in our minds. So let us celebrate the Holy Spirit in our lives by coming together with those who are different from us. Here at Trinity, we made that first step by attaining the goal of becoming open and affirming allowing God's Spirit to lead us rather than our stubborn human natures. So let us unite. Let us unite under the power of the Holy Spirit so that we may all be one.